Hello and welcome everybody. This is the MATLAB Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's episode, we are going to see how you can handle CFD simulation data using MATLAB. And for that episode, I'm really glad to have Nicolas on board. Hi, Nicolas. Hi, Gustav. How's it going? I'm really fine. So thanks for joining. And could you introduce yourself briefly? Sure. So my name is Nicholas. Uh, I work in uh, technical support, but we also do projects. And one of these projects with uh, a company in Christoph to Formula Student UK. And that's why I had a chance to, to look at what um, what's been done with uh, CFD. And um, so we came up with this um, webinar to show the cool things we can do with um, MATLAB to handle CFD data. Okay, so um, I totally agree that um, CFD simulation data and MATLAB, so the link is not clear to anybody. So let's directly move to today's agenda. So sure, we will motivate the topic. We will tell you what, what we want you to learn. Um, and then we will spend most of the time in a software demonstration. So Nicolas, what are we going to do actually? We're going to see how we can import CFD simulation results in MATLAB. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to see how we can visualize those results um, and then we're going to see what kind of computations post-processing we can do mm -hmm. and uh, to illustrate that we'll show a momentum balance and a swirling strength computation great this looks pretty interesting but before jumping into that let's talk a bit about the reasons why so why should guys use matlab to to work in in, in uh, CFD simulation data. So what we see that are a lot of you uh, are using CFD simulation for aero packages and for a lot of different purpose. And let us state that clear. So we don't want you to bypass the default post-processing tools um, coming along with the CFD solvers and the entire suites. Um, but we want to do actually is to, to show you some options that you can do additionally. Um, and this is basically, Nicolas, where you come into play. So what, what are the unique and cool features um, of MATLAB uh, in relation to CFD simulation data? Right. Well, first of all, I would say uh, scripted simulations and automating post-processing results is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, because while you might, you know, uh, you might take an experiment, do some processing, uh, get some interesting data from it, but then you, you've done a parametric study or you have 50 uh, simulation results uh, and you don't want to do this for every one. And so you, you can very, in MATLAB, you can very easily just write a script that will mm -hmm. analyze all of these results and give you, uh, you know, a nice um, a view of, of the mm -hmm. whole the yeah. whole data. Um, Definitely makes so sense. That might be a, a bit more difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you can also do some customized analyses, so a customized plot, um, of course, but also if you're looking at some quantities, for example, that aren't uh, common or default, which mm -hmm. you're still interested in, okay. uh, want to yeah go a little deeper, then you can definitely do that. Uh, and also, um, you know, we know a lot of people use MATLAB, so it makes it easier to communicate your results. If you have mm -hmm. MATLAB scripts that people can just take a look at and see what you're doing, you can also yeah. we have some pretty cool uh, report generation capabilities. So you can generate reports just um, showing all your results, and you can communicate that to the rest of your team, so they can see what you've been working on and how that affects them, and how they can help. Uh, yeah. your design. No, that's perfect. It makes perfect sense. So what I see behind that is usually a lot of guys and teams have MATLAB skills and CFD is, is quite a niche um, simulation environment. So not a lot of guys are doing that. And well, then you, you could work on, on the same platform. So this could be a reason. Um, and as you said, uh, sharing stuff in a team and using all the, the MATLAB tools um, behind like parallelization, optimization, report generation. This definitely makes sense to me. Cool. Well, Thanks a lot. Um, and now I think we can jump right away into the topic. So really interesting to see a, see and hear your software demonstration. Cool. Let's do it. Uh, let me just switch to MATLAB. Just so what we have here is a CFD results file. It's a text file. So let's just look at what it looks like. Um, so what it is, we just go up to the beginning. So we see we have different columns here. Uh, what we have is, and there's quite a few of them, there's x, y, z coordinates. You can export total pressure, density, x, y, z velocity, and also some uh, velocity derivatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, there's quite a bit of data here. So let's see how we can get that into MATLAB. So first of all, we do an import. It's right here. And then uh, we're going to use a new feature uh, from, from the, the more... Uh, newer releases, which is uh, the table. The table is essentially just a matrix, but uh, it has fields, so it's a bit easier to handle the data. So let me just run this section of code here. Um, so what we've done here is we got all the data into a CFD data table, mm -hmm. 
and we've also gathered x um, and you know x y z min max coordinates can mm -hmm. be useful for some visualization. Yeah. And here we have uh, we got scattered interpolant. So the scattered interpolant is a very useful thing. So when you do import CFD data, uh, you're going to have you know data at specific points um, on your on your mesh. Uh, but if you want to do some visualization, for example, get a slice, a YZ slice, um, you're going to need the data uh, at points that are not necessarily in the results file. So you will need to do some interpolation. And this is where the scattered interpolant comes in. What it will do is you specify X, Y, Z coordinates and mm -hmm. a uh, that field, for example, X velocity, and it will create an object that you can then use and just basically specify any XYZ triplet of coordinates and it will get the value of, in this case, X velocity um, at, at that point. And okay. so, so that's very useful and it handles, uh, it handles quite a bit. Uh, you can get, give it, it doesn't need to be structured data, it could be unstructured, they could even have duplicate points. You, you see here we have a warning mentioning duplicates points have been handled. Mm -hmm. So it basically handles anything you can score at it. And um, yeah, it, it does so quite, quite quickly as well. So we're going to see how, how can we use these scattered interpolants to visualize the data. So let's say I want to look at the YZ slice of my 3D data. Mm -hmm. uh, so why I do... quick notes, sorry, sure. uh, Nicolas, so very, very sorry to interrupt. Um, for you guys out there, um, we will put all the, the, the scripts and the files um, used in that episode to file exchange. So no need to do screenshots or, or anything uh, strange like that. Um, you will have access to all the material. You can do exactly the same what Nicolas just does um, at your PC, um, just, uh, just as a side note. <laughs> okay, yes, that, that, is, that is true. So as I was saying, we, we, let's say we want to specify the YZ velocity um, you know, slice. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll first specify YZ vectors. Then we will need to construct a rectangular you know, grid of points of uh, regularly ordered, uh, uniformly distributed points. We can use mm -hmm. a, this using this function here. Uh, and, and then we will interpolate the data. And this is where we use the scattered interpolant. Mm -hmm. um, this does so for 1D vector, so we just use a reshape to get a 2D matrix. Mm -hmm. And then we will display the slice. So let me just run this section of code here. Uh, you can see it's quite fast, uh, even though um, a fair number of interpolation were done. Mm -hmm. Let me just bring that up. So what we have, we see this YZ slice showing velocity magnitude uh, in color uh, here, so for example, you have the wing in the middle, so at the top of the wing and at the bottom of the wing, you have regions of high velocity magnitude, as you would expect, and low velocity magnitude behind the wing. We've also overlaid a quiver plot showing the direction and uh, magnitude of, of the velocity at each point. And you can, of course, customize the spacing, uh, and depending on the, you know, um, how many interpolation points you use, you will have a uh, more or less uh, coarse results. Yeah, basically, um, guys out there know uh, about MATLAB functionality when it comes to plotting. Basically, we we use it here. Um, you have all the options that you commonly have, so you can customize whatever you want. Um, that's the, the the big beauty here, the the, the big power. Indeed, uh, and you can see here now. Now we 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 really see what we're dealing with. Let's say I want to look at the you know the drag on the mm -hmm. ring. Um, so we would, would what we would need to do is affect the momentum balance uh, of the momentum um, before and after the wing. Mm -hmm. So essentially at y equals 0 0.05 and y equals minus 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. So let's see how we can do that. Oh, sorry. Um, so that's the next section. It's a, we will first define an inlet and an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, so we specify the y outlet and inlet positions. Then we again construct a, uh, a mesh grid, and we will then do the interpolation. So this time it will be an XZ slice instead of a yep. YZ slice. So we will get the velocities and pressure at the inlet and at the outlet. You can see the sections uh, here. And then we just do compute the momentum drag. So of course we will need the density, but here density is um, constant. Mm -hmm. We just get uh, the one value. But if, if it weren't constant, it would be very easy to accommodate. Um, then we get, you know, the momentum coming in minus the momentum coming out. Um, then also do a pressure differential, add these two together, yep. get them in, multiply by the surface, 
which gives us the drag, and then we can do the same for the lift. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we have these values, we can actually display them in a way that's you know easy to, to visualize. So let me just run this code right here. And what this will do is compute the drag, and it's going to add an arrow yeah. uh, to our previous um, to our previous plot showing the direction and, and scale of the drag. So you can see here the um, wing is being dragged backwards, which is to be expected, and downwards, which is also what you would expect here. So a big thing when you're doing CFD analysis is looking at vortices and how and when they're shed. Um, and there are a number of ways to visualize these. Uh, you could look, look at vorticity, but the problem with vorticity is that it will show uh, vortices in the shear layer when they might not be, or essentially the shear layer will just obfuscate any vortices that might uh, be, be shed there. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a number of criterion um, that can be computed to, to look at uh, vortices. Uh, for example, the lambda criterion, the Q criterion. One of them is the lambda CI criterion, or swelling strength. Um, I find that it's quite a you know, useful criterion. It's quite robust. Mm -hmm. It's fairly straightforward to compute and to interpret. Uh, so that's what, what we're going to do here. Um, so you can see here to compute uh, the solid stretch criterion is a local criterion. So it's defined at each point in the flow and it's defined as follows. So let's take the velocity tensor for that point in the flow, which can, can be constructed thus. Uh, and then you look at the eigenvalues for this tensor. And essentially if the eigenvalues, are, there's a pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues, then that's uh, your lambda CI. So that's your swelling strength. So this is what we're doing here, essentially uh, checking if the eigenvalues are complex. And if they are, uh, we just take uh, the sum of both absolute value divided by two. And if not, then the swelling strength criterion is equal to zero. OK. Well, when, when I hear that, um, it seems that we have to do an eigenvector analysis on each node in the grid. So isn't in, that quite, quite uh, well, costy in terms of CPU power? Uh, yes, that, that's true. So imagine, uh, hey, we have 100,000 points. So yeah. you're doing eigenvector computations on times 100,000. Yeah. So that is, that is quite computationally intensive. However, this is, these are matrix computations. Mm -hmm. So here I show how you can do all of these in, in a fairly straightforward line of code. Mm -hmm. You can use the array fun function to apply um, a function that you define to every element of the input arrays. So let's run it now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, done. So this, this took about 0.5 seconds. To oh, come on. Wow, value. that's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. The eigenvalue is uh, for essentially 100,000 matrices. OK. Um, so it was quite fast. Um, and this is, you know, we're really leveraging the power of MATLAB when it comes to, to matrix computations. Mm -hmm. OK. See that. Uh, so now let's take a, take a look at what this looks like. Mm -hmm. So again, we're going to visualize uh, here an XZ slice behind the body of, of swirling strengths. Uh, so we, again, use a scattered interpolant. And now let's just run this code and see what this looks like. So what you're seeing here is essentially two regions of, of um, two vortices that mm -hmm. you know, are created by the body downstream uh, the wing. And these are created about at the tip of the wings yeah. so um, and you can actually that actually is what you would expect to see and you can see behind the plane for example or at the tips of the wing you will have some some vortices being yeah. shed um, and you and this is very um, useful and interesting to look at because vortices will have a low pressure core that will induce drag on the rest of your body so the higher the vortex intensity here the you know the more problems you may have and the more drag may be induced also might have some noise associated with it uh, some vibrations that can be detrimental to your structural integrity uh, and such so this is really something that's that's useful to look at okay let me ask another question i know that we had a wing and the the simulation of of that wing was well everything was pretty symmetric what mm -hmm. i'm seeing now here it's not entirely symmetric um, along the um, vertical axis. So yes. do you have any, any reason for that? Yes, so that was most likely due to the fact that the simulation is not... So we used a uh, Reynolds average Nebbia-Stokes simulation, so mm -hmm. it's um, it's averaged in time. Okay. But um, yeah, these types of flows are, uh, you know, uh, there are limits to the models we use okay. when we simulate, and mm -hmm. Reynolds average Nebbia-Stokes you know, has limits and yeah, this, okay. This plot is illustrating one of these limits here. Okay, no worries. Right. Just it's out of curiosity. Entirely fully converge, if you will. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Nicholas, thank you very, very much. Um, and for the frequent viewers of the Racing Lounge, now we will uh, be a bit critical to ourselves and, and well, discuss the key takeaways. I think, Nicholas, um, you have done the software demonstration, so it's your part to, to go through that. And, and let's have a brief discussion on each of the bullet points. That's fair, yes. So I think one of the, yeah, the first key takeaway is that you really see uh, all of the data we were handling was in matrix form. Mm -hmm. And MATLAB is really good at handling matrices and it makes it easy to handle matrices. Yeah. So we really benefit from you know, MATLAB's matrix computation mm -hmm. engine. Oh, uh, fully, also, fully support that, yeah. Yes. Uh, you also saw, so this, this analysis I did for one results file and you saw you know, it was quite quick mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't take that much code to do. And it would take even less code to automate. For example, yeah. if you had 50 results file, you could just create a loop that would yeah. go through these results files and just yeah. gather your data and then display the data for all your yeah. all your results to kind of get you a good overview of what's happening. And if you've done a parametric study, you know, getting the right parameters in yeah. to get the optimal optimal design for yeah. your... Well, just uh, another question at that point. Um, and the input file for a CFD simulation is classically also a, a table or a grid or a text sheet, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, because then you also could automate um, the, the solver or basically um, create for parameter studies, basically create a set of input files um, eventually execute them from MATLAB and then do as you've just illustrated the post processing. You basically could automate every every process in, in or every step in the process of CFD simulation, right? Right. So I, yeah, that's actually a really good. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. You could definitely do that um, because yeah, what you're giving to simulation is just a set of parameters. So yeah. you could you could really create these you know simulation files, just run them through, get mm -hmm. your results, and automate the whole process. And essentially, yeah. with the push of a button, you could have. Yeah. yeah, all your results um, displayed and your parameter studies. Um. Okay, cool. Well, um, guys, we are not forcing you to do that, but just spinning some ideas. Um, and the last point, I, I think you can see the, the beauty behind customization. You can also customize plots. Um, you can, well, illustrations in general. So is there something um, we, we should also highlight, Nicholas, when it comes to customization? No, really just what you said. You know, okay. the plotting is something you have immense control over. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, but, you know, specific functions, uh, for the Schrodinger strength uh, yeah. is not, you know, the usual default value that you could compute um, yeah. easily, so you can definitely do that. And if you have other ideas and you try, you want to try other things or you want to look at a, you know, specific section uh, of the data, you could really uh, do a lot of things here and you have total control over your data. Um, Perfect. Well, fully support these statements. I hope it was helpful because that's already the end of today's episode. Nicolas, thank you very much. Um, was pretty interesting, extremely cool. Um, we will, as said, put every every material, every script to file exchange so you can execute it on your own. And just at the end of today's episode, let me remind you about a few things. So if you want to send feedback, and we definitely encourage you to do so, send it either via mail or to our um, Facebook group. Um, you will find all episodes of the Racing Lounge on our dedicated um, webpage, which is mathworks.com slash racing lounge. And just to point you again to our software offer, that's complimentary, that's free for you, um, including a lot of toolboxes, basically including all the tools that you might need for race car development. And if you use our software, we would be delighted if you put our logo onto your car or onto your reports. Um, at that point, Nicolas, thanks again. Thank yeah, you guys thanks. for watching and hope to see you next time.